Hey guys, welcome back to my channel Electronics Media. Today in this video, I'm going to explain about the glitch free clock marks. Glitch free clock marks is one of the most commonly used module in any of the clocking circuits. So assume if you have a design and uh, you want to run at uh, you know at one particular frequency, so that is assume say it depends on the some you know speeds. So if I consider the real example right like in case in case of a PCI, so the PCI operates on assume like you know uh, like you know from Gen one to Gen four. So it might have it might have like you know two PLLs which are you know clocking the uh, when you are running at a Gen one speed and Gen two speed. And the second source will be, uh, you know, it will be used for the you know, gener generating the clocks for the Gen 3 and Gen 4. So now, um, so assume these are the uh, two PLLs, PLLs, and they are generating two different clock frequencies. And now, if you want to make a switch from, you know, from, uh, you know, Gen 2 to Gen 3, so that time what happens? You you have to switch the source of the PLLs from one PLL to another PLL. So at that time, you have to ensure that there is no glitch propagated on the clock outputs. So there, the this particular you know glitch-free clock marks will be used. So now, uh, when I say you know uh, you know uh, when I, when I say it's a clock marks, right? Like what comes to our mind is this simple circuit. Okay. So if I say uh, 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 this is my uh, th this is a clock marks. Okay. What is my uh, what how what is the behavior? This is just a simple two is to one marks. So when the select line is equals to zero. Uh, my uh, clock one will be propagating to the clock out or uh, clock output, and when select line is equals to one, clock two will be propagating to the uh, clock out. So now, if I uh, write it in terms of uh, the equation, so this is my y or the clock out, okay? So which is equals to select cell bar into clock one or with cell into clock two, okay? So now uh, let's consider this example what will be the behavior of my you know a clock output now uh, i have these two clocks clock 1 and clock 2 and this is my select line so now my select line is uh, initially it is zero and uh, uh, it is changing from zero to one at this point of time okay so now what will be the my clock output okay this is my clock out so as per this equation right so this particular circuit when select line is equals to zero that is from here to here my clock one be clock one will be selected okay so this will be my output okay this clock one will be coming uh, will be reflected on the clock out okay so now at this point of time right here if you see uh, the you know uh, the select line is changing from 0 to 1 so but when it is 0 my clock 1 should be pro propagating so till here it is like this and it is changing over here and then what happened here exactly at this window right so it is changing from 0 to 1 okay so the clock sh uh, should uh, switch from clock 1 source to clock 2 source okay so that time there, see, since here if you observe carefully the clock 2 is 0 over here and it became 0 okay till this point okay and then it became one now this is my clock two source that is propagating and so on okay so if you see here here this is the clock one and this is a clock two now this particular if you see here right this is a glitch okay this is a unexpected output okay so Whenever uh, you say any clock uh, glitch free clock marks right so we have to ensure there are no glitches that will be present on this output of output clock okay so we have to ensure that the clocks are clean and uh, the the you know the complete period of the clock is present okay it's not like just uh, you know you are uh, you, know, uh, you know chopping off the clock it's not a clock chopper it has to be a complete cycle of the clock should be present okay so uh, so we have to ensure we have to design circuits in such a way that you know uh, such glitches are not coming will should not be coming on the output clock so now what is the way in which by which you know we can uh, you know fix this issue so if i say right now what happens this is my um, uh, select line which is going from 0 to 1 over here and now in that duration right like when it is when it has changed from 0 to 1 if i turn off this my clock for some duration okay so assume if i switch it off over here okay and then uh, it became like this okay okay then what happens 
when it is uh, changing from 0 to 1 so if my clock itself like the previous clock which was uh, selected right, if it becomes 0 then what happens we can safely sample the second clock okay it can switch to the second clock so we have to design a circuit by which you know we have to stop the clock which was propagating to the output and then only once the clock is stopped then we have to allow the second clock source to propagate onto the output so we have to design a circuit in such a way so that this uh, you know uh, condition can be taken care so then we will be safe and we will ensure that the glitch is not propagated on the output so let me explain that with the help of that you know the updated circuit how we can uh, modify this particular uh, you know um, uh, clock st this mux structure so that we uh, you know don't see the any of the glitches this glitches so this is the updated clock mux structure so if you observe here what we have we have retained the basic structure that is and uh, two and gates and uh, followed by the or gate okay so earlier it was just that select line which was going to the and gate along with the clock one and then the inverted uh, select bit was going to the second and gate along with the clock two and then we had a or gate okay so that means this is the basic uh, clock uh, you know clock mark structure but what we have done is we have updated the basic clock mark structure to the you know uh, to ensure that you know the we are taking care of this uh, the glitch propagation by adding this extra logic okay this is the extra logic that is sitting over here so what do we have here so we have you uh, know two you uh, know um, uh, you know flops which are in the on the on one path on one one, one leg and the two flops on the other leg and um, here we are taking the feedback from the uh, the one leg to the other leg okay so the reason being so what we are ensuring is that as I explained in, uh, in the basic structure right we are trying to gate off the I mean only when the clock is gated off then only we will switch it to the second clock source otherwise we will have that glitch uh, you know issue uh, here also so this is the reason what we are doing is we are taking the feedback from the one leg I mean the output of the I mean uh, the from one leg to the second leg and uh, from here to here also because when we are switching from this clock source to other clock source so then also we need a feedback path so now let's understand this what is the you know with through help of with the help of the waveform so and one more thing to observe here is um, for the second flop right so we are taking the you know um, the, the negative of the clock so that the we are we, we, we are trying to safely sample this select value so that's the reason we have this you know uh, select line uh, so, so the second flop is uh, you know uh, working on the negative edge here also if you see it's uh, working on the negative edge and uh, uh, so some designs what they do is they will instead of this one flop they will have a you know a, a double synchronizers okay so that means that, that means that two stage synchronizers they will add it over here and uh, so that means what it will have is one AND gate followed by the two stage uh, synchronizers and then this uh, negative edge of the uh, flop okay so let's understand this uh, you know from uh, like you know uh, in uh, like both the leg like will analyze and how uh, this circuit helps in you know uh, you know preventing the glitch on the output clock uh, these are the two clocks clock 1 and clock 2 and this is my select line which is uh, switching from uh, 0 to 1 over here and um, now uh, when it is initially it is zero so that time what is what what is the expectation that the clock two should propagate on the output and uh, when the select line switches to one right so the, when this switches to one we want the clock one to be propagated on the output so now so what happens when the cell initially assume that all of these uh, flops are having a value of zero okay so all these flops all the four flops having the value of zero that means output q value is zero so now when the select line is initially zero so what happens here the and two one gate because here the uh, the value of the select line is zero so one propagates here and uh, the here we are taking the q bar output okay so that means this q is zero and the q bar is one so here we will get one one so that means output of the and uh, two one becomes one okay so that's the and two one so this is a combinational block right so it's a combinational element so it instantly changes to from zero to one okay so it became one now if you observe d21 so this will be this and21 will be sampled in the next rising edge of the uh, flop so that's why what i'm doing uh, this uh, on the clock 2 so this uh, d21 will be changing to here okay so it becomes one over here and now uh, and then it stays high so now now if you see d22 
okay right? so this one is working on the negative edge of the of, uh, clock so at the negative edge of the clock right from when it is changing from 1 to 0 that time this d22 will be sampled and then that will be appearing on the q as a q output so this will be the you know uh, uh, this is like a uh, half clock cycle shift okay this is a half clock cycle shift and now the and 22 right so this is the and 22 work, uh, output right so that, that will be so what we'll do since this d22 is 1 over here now we will sam uh, and this with a clock 2 so now what happens here it is a uh, change to 1 okay at that time my clock 2 is 0 and when it is uh, switch uh, when it becomes uh, uh, one over here right so that time it will just sample all of the clock inputs okay so this will be sampled so and then what happens if you carefully observe here my select line is changing from 0 to 1 so now here in this circuit will not abruptly consider the other clock okay that means it is not going to switch to the clock 1 till it gets the feedback from this path to here okay so now what it what do you mean by the feedback let's understand that now if you see here the select line is changing from 0 to 1 now the and to 1 right so this can go change abruptly because this is a combination so as soon as this select line changes from 1 to 0 so that means here uh, oh sorry 0 to 1 so this may this will get a 0 so my and gate output will change instantaneously okay but the d to 1 so will be uh, will be sampled in the next rising edge of the clock okay this is my rising edge of the clock so here it is changing from uh, 1 to 0 and then in the next uh, negative edge of the clock right so then my d22 will be changing okay so that will be changing over here so now once this is the at this point that my clock has changed i mean the clock has been stopped on this and to to output okay so this output of the and gate my clock uh, to uh, clock has been stopped so it has become zero okay so now what we are doing uh, at this um, same point right like the d22 so here it goes uh, the output q2 will uh, q2 bar right so that will be propagating as a feedback to this and d1 and d11 okay so now let's understand that so and d11 okay so even though my select line has changed from uh, you know 0 to 1 over here okay but my still if you uh, my and d11 will not to be uh, you know um, uh, reflecting the the you know uh, the select value because the other path is not there I mean uh, that it, it's a uh, the d22 uh, the output of this flop was not there so that's why it is not changed it has not changed instantaneously but it gets changed over here okay so that's it changing from uh, you know 0 to 1 now similarly the d11 is just the um, you know uh, flopped uh, version of this uh, uh, input so that is nothing but it gets sampled in the during the next clock edge of the uh, this clock one okay so here it is changing the value so that's uh, i mean at this uh, uh, posterior edge of the clock it is changing the value okay so d11 is changing from 0 to 1 so now uh, again the d12 will be changing on the negative edge of the uh, same clock that is the clock one so this entire blo block is working on the clock one right all of these flop and these two are working on the clock two okay so that's the reason this changes the d11 changes its value only on the negative edge of the clock of clock one okay so now what happens again so this is the and now so what we'll do we will and this uh, d12 so d yeah d12 right so this is a d12 so we will add this d12 with a clock 1 okay so that means when um, here it starts this this signal is 1 okay so then uh, but at that window my uh, clock 1 source uh, you know clock 1 is 0 initially so it's 0 and then it just uh, reflects the uh, whatever the clock is changing the clock that's a clock 1 now then it goes to the or gate so what will the or gate will have so initially it is 0 uh, my select line has changed it is initially zero over here right so it's zero so immediately it did not reflect over here okay it did the same clock cycle but it instead it reflected over here okay because of the feedback path and uh, the uh, yeah because of feedback path it is just reflecting on the next uh, uh, after certain clock cycles okay so then what happened my clock output will be initially the clock two okay so that is here and once my select line has been switched from zero to one okay so then here if you see what happened my clock has been stopped and it the output there is no clock in this window no clock okay 
there is no clock on the output so this is basically it's a zero okay for certain duration this depends on the uh, how many stages of the synchronizers or because as i explained right so this is this uh, main uh, here in this example i have just taken the flop but here we can add the synchronizer this synchronizer is required to ensure that the select has uh, select line can be sampled properly because sometimes what happens if this comes from a asynchronous uh, domain right like then we will have a you know uh, uh, the metastable conditions here also because we will be sampling the on the clock one right and a clock two also so we will end up in that metastable condition that's the reason we may we can add the synchronizers instead of just this one flop okay so the, um, and um, for all of that synchronization how much time it takes right so for th those many clock cycles th for those many clock cycles there will be no output okay so there is a no clock in this window and once it has been switched right and then only after certain clock cycles we will see the the, the second clock that is propagating on the output clock so by this way we can safely you know uh, switch from one clock uh, you know clock source to another clock source dynamically so suppose if you have a design where the clock switching is uh, completely a kind of a static one right like you know only in one uh, mode you know one mode we are so working on one clock and when we switch to another mode so that is not dynamically happening but it's kind of a static right so then by design you have to ensure that that uh, you know the switching doesn't happen in the dynamically then you can use the regular mux but when you are seeing that it's a completely it's, it can be a dynamic switching right so then you have to see you have to use such circuits so that there is no glitch seen on the output of the clock. So I hope this information is uh, clear and uh, useful. Please do let me know in the comment section if you have any queries. And also please subscribe to my channel and make sure you hit the bell icon so that you receive all the further updates. Thank you.